Hey guys, so today I have on the workbench, I have a couple of pairs of Minotoyo calipers that uh, are the same exact model number, but because of the years of production, they have a major difference. These are both model 505-626s. The difference is in how you go about reclocking them. So um, I actually just finished clocking that one and I'll show you how to do that one first. And this one, the way that you end up having to clock it is you end up having to use a small strip of uh, metal that when the caliper was new was probably included in the box with the caliper as opposed to this model is more like the more modern versions in where in which case there is a way to actually insert a pin into an opening in order to push on a bracket there's actually right inside the caliper right here there's a bracket that actually supports the pinion gear that is meshing with the rack and it's made of spring steel and by pushing a pin up inside the movement you can actually push that little spring steel up far enough to disengage the pinion so on many models, if you remove the bezel locking screw, you can actually get to a slot to put in a flat metal pin that would have been included in the, uh, in the caliper uh, box when it was new, but often goes missing. This one is a little bit earlier. There is no slot for that. What you actually do is you actually use the hole for the that the actual thumb screw for the locking bezel lock uh, actually threaded into. So it's important to know what you're dealing with um, because if you look at the bezel lock on this one, which I still haven't reinstalled, notice that this hole that the bezel lock threads into is actually on the movable jaw it's not part of the movement so that's why you can't use the pin trick or the tool on this one this one on the other hand even though it's the same exact model number we can see it's constructed quite differently I've already removed the bezel lock the hole that it went into is actually hidden right there So this has got almost like a little bit of a springiness to it. So you get to pull up on it and you can see the hole. The first thing you get to check is make sure that they repeat. So these also need to be clocked, but you can see that I can go over and over and over again and the needle always comes back to the same spot. That's repeatability and you've got to have that before you even bother reclocking them. Because if you don't have that, it means that for some reason uh, the pinion gear is jumping time on the rack. Now that could be a damaged tooth on the pinion gear. It could be a damaged tooth on the rack itself. And oftentimes though, it's just debris. Uh, a little piece of swarf or debris gets in there and you clean out the rack and oftentimes that'll solve the problem. Once you get it to the point where it will repeat, if your only problem you have left is, is that it's not clocked correctly. And what I mean by that is that if we look at this right now, Okay, with the jaws fully closed, you'll notice the needle is pointing at about, if this were a clock dial, a clock face, it's pointing at about the uh, seven o'clock position. And what we want is ideally we want that pointed at the 12 o'clock position. Now, some guys will clock these so that the needle points down to the zero down below here, okay? And that's perfectly fine. Uh, that, that might be just a matter of personal preference. I like to have them clocked at the top. And I think that's how they're shipped. So I want to get it so that when this dial, when this jaw is fully closed, that needle will be pointing straight up and down. But let's do this one first. So I already did this one and then I uh, replaced the broken crystal. And it's still off actually a couple of thou. I mean, ideally, that would be perfectly vertical, and you can see it's not on zero when the jaws are cold, closed. But because this one is such a, a, a pain in the butt to get exactly right on, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just live with that. So 
Let me show you the video I shot earlier of me actually zeroing this one. So these came with a different little accessory that often goes missing, which was simply a little strip of metal that you actually used to place on top of the rack to actually get it so that you can move the jaw without the needle moving anymore. So what I did was I just grabbed myself some five thousandths thick shim stock that I had and I cut a narrow little strip out of it and I place that narrow strip on the rack and then I drive move the jaw to the left and that kind of drives the pinion up onto that little metal stock oh by the way the other thing I did to make my life a little easier <laughs> is I loosened the two jib screws on the top here these jib screws control the amount of pressure that's put on a jib strip or a little metal strip that's inside here that controls the friction by loosening those jib screws a lot, that allows the whole jaw to rock a little bit and it makes it a little easier for that pinion to ride up onto that metal strip. And once I did that, now I'm actually, I've actually got that in position right there. So you can see my little strip of metal in there. So now, you see I can move this jaw and the needle's not moving. I'm not going to kid you. It's a little tricky to, to, to get it to time it just right. Matter of fact, if I wanted to get really finicky, I'm probably still off maybe one thou. But I am going to leave it alone. That's going to be close enough for my purposes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this over. And what I need to do is I need to bring it over. If I, if I close it all the way, what happens is as I start coming this way, my metal strip will start to get into this area right here that shallows. See how the groove is full depth right here, but as it comes up here, it shallows because of the way it was made. And that might kick out my strip out of position. So what I want to do is I'm going to get it so that the jaw is right on the one. So that number one, I want that to be lined up perfectly with this area right here. And my, see my metal strip is catching, catching the teeth. So I'm just going to hold it up a little bit so that I can keep that from happening. There we go. All right. Now I'm just going to take a quick peek with a magnifier and see whether or not that is not quite on the zero yet. Okay. I mean on the one. I'm going to use my fine thumb wheel adjustment. All right. That looks good right there. I'm splitting the, the one. So now that I've got it where I want it, I'm going to lock the jaw with this thumb screw. Now with the jaw locked, I'm going to carefully pull out my strip. Ah, and it moved. Well, let's see how close I was. Unlock this. Eh, not too bad. Can you see it? Yeah, so right now I'd say that needle is about three thou before the 12 o'clock position. It's very close. And being that this is an older pair of calipers, I'm not going to get too finicky with them. I could try again and see if I can get closer, but you get the uh, general gist of what I did there. Now, let's take a look at this newer style. Again, same exact model number, completely different assembly. So we take the pin. I actually already did this one. It's pretty good right now. But I'm going to throw it out on a purpose just to show you how much easier it is to clock one of these. Insert the pin through the hole. If I go straight in, I will actually hit the stem that the needle is mounted on. And I could tell because I can see it move. I can see it moving right there. So I'm going to tilt this a little bit so that I go past the stem. And now right there, I'm actually tapping that spring steel piece. So if I push up on that with a little bit of force, just gently, you can see that whole thing move up. When that moves up, now I can move the jaw and look. 
the needle doesn't move. Now watch what happens when I close it. Whoa! Way out of whack. All right. So all I have to do, rotate so that I am at zero. Gently push up. Close the jaws. Release. Now sometimes, if it's not meshing, when you open it, see that click right there? It wasn't meshing correctly. Now it just meshed, so now when I come back, you see it's off. So it might take a couple of tries. There we go, I think I got it. So that's pretty good. Um, You see though how you can still see that that's tilted a little to the right so I'm probably like one tooth off. So if you really ain't over attentive you can uh, keep trying and you'll eventually get it. Oh, I hope that helps some guys. Uh, if you have a uh, suggestion feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.